It's time for happy hour. Yay, we're doing it again. It feels like our first time with all the technical difficulties we were just having. But cheers, everyone. Good to see cheers. you, my friends. What are you are cheers you okay? to, Julia? <laughs> Got my water. <laughs> Have one for me. <laughs> Have one for me. Um, no, it's good to see everyone. We're a week closer to baseball. Can I say Maybe. that? A lot of rumors. I mean, in theory, at some point, yeah, sure. I mean, we're a day closer to something. We're staying positive around here. No, it is it's good to see everyone. It looks like TK's been kicked out of his man cave. And yeah, what's going on there? I'm in a new awesome. state, actually. I've been in Florida for a week. Oh, turning oh, it up on us. You bolted. Oh, so yeah, things are starting to reopen a little bit in Texas. Um, I still haven't gone anywhere though, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I did go I did to go, I did go <laughs> to uh, um, I did go to there's a uh, a patio bar near where I live, a bar restaurant because obviously bars can't open just yet. So Sunday, beautiful day. I went and sat out on the patio, met a friend of mine, and 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 had a beer, and it was glorious. It felt good just to be. I mean, number one in the sunshine and number two to like do something that was like semi-normal and it was spread out enough so that nobody was really close to each other um so it, you know and every you know all the servers were wearing masks um it wasn't too bad but uh it was just it just felt weird like it just felt like you know like it was the first time i'd ever been on a patio having a beer before um it was it was a really strange feeling but um but it was a lot of fun yeah, even so the gyms are opening, but um, I don't, who needs gyms when you have cases of Budweiser and. <laughs> yeah, I saw your Instagram, Julia. Them. You're, I mean, you obviously have an excuse for not partaking in the alcohol portion of our happy hour since you're expecting. So you, you, I saw on your Instagram, you're putting those, those, those cases of Budweiser and Crawford Bach to good use. That's, I was using them as weight. <laughs> Seriously, y'all. I was using. I was looking around the house trying to find something that was a little heavier. Everyone's got good, good workout tips and ideas on social media, so it's really easy to find. But I'm not ready to get back in a gym just yet, and uh, so I just decided to go for the for the cases. Got a good workout in, so if you guys need to get after it, don't drink it. Use it. I would say normally it is a 12 ounce curl, but you were getting a little aggressive. <laughs> I know. And, um, but I was getting my workout and it was, you know, I, I do feel like we're getting closer to some normalcy, even though I, you know, we're all going to take it, I think, as we feel comfortable with it and go about it on our own. But, uh, but it is exciting to, to know that maybe there's, there's some normalcy around the corner. Don't you guys think? I hope yeah, so. I, think so. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, I don't know what normalcy is going to look like but there should be some sort of normalcy um you said that they were changing some things up uh, here's what's crazy to me like the different rules between the two states that, that i have houses florida you're allowed to play singles tennis or golf but no doubles texas you're allowed to play doubles golf i mean doubles tennis sorry doubles tennis you're allowed to play doubles tennis in texas in florida singles only but you can get a massage here i don't think you can get a massage in texas right i think it's coming up next week yeah, but that's what it's just so random. It, it's so random. Every state does things different. Like everybody's got a different set of rules. So, so you're I coming back I'm, to Texas when you're ready to play doubles tennis? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the good news with uh, with all the states doing things a little differently is we're getting good news from New York and, and California, though. That it looks like they're going to relax some of those uh, things that they put into place where it felt like Major League Baseball may get squeezed out, but now they've relaxed them enough to, for professional sports to go in if everybody can come to a, to an agreement, right? Yeah, it yep. sounds like Governor Cuomo in New York, he uh, more or less gave his blessing to pro sports returning to, to New York City. And that was one of the big questions. I mean, obviously without fans, at least initially, but I mean, that's, that's, off, that's, that's encouraging. Um, but I mean, I think that's what's been nice about the last few days is it feels like there's just been some momentum. Obviously it's going to take a while to get back to normal, whatever that winds up looking like uh, once, once all this has kind of uh, mitigated itself. But um, you know, it's nice to just hear people taking steps toward mm -hmm. getting back to quote unquote normal. 
What was the funniest thing you guys thought about that uh, 67 page document that the owner sent to the players? Anything strike you as funny? Mine the was the sunflower seeds. The sunflower seeds. Yeah. The it seems yeah, like no it's going to be almost impossible. Or the indoor cages, Blummer. How about they're discouraging showering? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I thought you would like that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kind of a hygiene guy there, Sparky. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, like, so, so Blummer and, and Sparky, fill us in on this because I don't, you know, I don't think a lot of people really understand because a lot of players – They'll shower when they get to the field. They'll shower after BP. They'll shower after the game. Like, mm -hmm. most guys are taking, what, two or three showers a day? Well, it's all a personal preference, but here's my thing. If you <laughs> have to wash your hands for 20 seconds, they don't want me to wash my body after hanging around 30 dudes and sweating my brains out? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I don't care if we have to do it, you know, one by one. You got to take a shower, man. <laughs> It'll be like American uh, Legion ball. You go home in your uniform. I mean, that, that <laughs> might be, you know, I don't know what the rules are going to be like after game, but the one who might appreciate, appreciate it the most might be Julia not being able to have contact with these guys if they're not showering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can just do a so Zoom true. meeting and not have to smell them. That's I like the true. one where the guys not on the active roster have to sit in the stands. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Beat it. Start, it's going to be old school, uh, like Sparky, back when you were coming up through the minor leagues back in 78, and you had to, like, write on the charts, chart yeah. the pitches. Yeah, then I'd go to the discotheque right after. It was great. Yes. <laughs> hey, when you got called I used to hang out with Danny and Sandy. 54? I used to hang out with Danny and Sandy. Oh, my God. There's going to be some viewers on this happy hour. You're say, he just said discotheque. What's that? <laughs> can you okay. go to those now <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean like the players sitting in the stands like that article in the athletic with ken rosenthal where they had the diagrams at the bottom of the do of the document of the article rather and it showed like kind of like one coach would be here one coach would be here and and the players spread out you know a few seats between them and in the dugout and and sitting in the stands but like what if you're asked to pinch hit or pinch run? Like guys usually take a few swings or mm -hmm. if you're pinch mm -hmm. running, you're going to jog a little bit, but I, I mean, are you, are you going to just run up steps at this point? I mean, I don't, you know, it's, it's a lot that there's a lot of unknown at this point in terms of how that's going to look. What do you so think? What you, if there's a walk-off win and everyone just. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you have. Yeah. Air, air high fives and all that. Yeah. And then you have the netting behind all the dugouts now. So, like, guys are going to have to, like – I mean, it's going to be like a maze to get back to the field for something like that. What do you think the interview process is going to be like? Do you think it's going to be like the playoffs where there are a couple of guys will go into a room and there will be spacing almost like a – like President Trump will be spacing in that room and, and you just ask a few questions and go from there? I don't think there's going to be a lot of people at the particular events. I think it's going to be all like this on video. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Just yeah, they used to start off. The media guy or something. I don't know. Ooh. Um, so I, I don't think I've told you this yet, but we're supposed to have a special guest coming on at, any, at any moment. So just be, be ready. A special guest. In case, uh, next, in case we have a. We're not, we're not good enough it. for you. Wait, are you, are you, are you, are you delivering? Did you not tell us? <laughs> <laughs> But we still have no, some time no. here. Oh. Coming no, no, That'd be a good yet. show. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm out. No. Um, so they, your husband Matt's no. coming on, right? Matt's coming on. Oh, there we go. Where is no, Matt? He's, I can Where's hear Matt him right down now? there working on his putting. I can hear it over and over. On his over. putting. Yeah. So is he not allowed to drink the setup? Is he not allowed to drink the Budweisers or because it would mess up your weights? <laughs> yeah, I am. Can't mess up my, my two cases. Those are my weights. <laughs> um, no, I was trying to get you guys excited for our special guest, but uh so just hang tight, but we will have someone jumping on. Um Anything? what do you call that? Can I bring like up a, a subject? Zoom bomb? A zoom zoom bombing? I think Zoomba. you just came up with a new word. I think it's zoom bomb. I think that's what it is. Yeah, like photo okay. bombing. I've yeah. never done Zumba. <laughs> okay, until we get until we get zoom bombed, I, I've got a, a question. I looked this up a little earlier, and this is in lieu of Julia's pregnancy. Most common baby names for girls in 2019. Okay. Ava. Huh? Ava. Nope. Number six is hilarious. Okay, so number one. Blue. 
Number one is Posey. Oh, Posey. P-O-S-I-E. Number okay. one most popular name in all the country. I guess it's the country. I, you know what? I should have looked it up whether... I would imagine it's the country. <laughs> it was, it was season mental, ticket holders. Giant whoever did the list, it was, it was mental list. floss. Number two is Isla or Isla. It's I-S-L-A. What do you think it is? Isla? Isla. I think that's Isla. I guess we'll find out in the next, you know, 10, 15 years when yeah. right. all of them start growing up. When they all hit the schools. Number three is Olivia. Do you like any of those so far? It's pretty yeah. popular. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Are Aurora. we naming the baby? Aurora. <laughs> Aurora yeah, my is four. Ooh. That's Five good. is Maeve. M-A-E-V-E. -E. Have you ever heard of that? No. Wow. Maeve. Isn't that a, isn't that a tool for like wood work? I think that's a lathe. Oh. LA. <laughs> I thought it was a shade Maeve. of a color. Number one boy name in 2019. Guy <laughs> man. What is it? Milo. 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 Milo Hamilton. Really? Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Milo. Oh, so Milo. I got that's my contribution. Milo and okay. Posey are the two most popular boys and girls names in okay. 2019. Is yeah. Posey we'll a add thing? them to the that? list. Pocket full of posies, right? Does anybody oh. know a baby named Posey? No, I've no. never, I've never met anybody with the first name Posey. Have not. But it, no. it sounds like I'm gonna if I stick around a little while longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah apparently, wherever he's getting this from. Yeah, and and Maeve, we're gonna be meeting a lot of Maves here. Apparently. Maeve, yeah. M A E V E. I've never heard of that. Um, I, I, I've got to mention this because I, I text with him the day before. But we've got some good news here recently about Art Howe, who yeah. has the coronavirus, um, had the symptoms. And I knew about it and I texted him the day before he went to the hospital. And he was telling me then about it, it was the most excruciating pain uh, that he'd ever uh, had. You know, he'd lost his uh, taste buds and uh, it, things weren't going well. And next night we found out that uh, he had gone to the hospital. And we got good news yesterday that Art. Art and Betty, they got him back home, and uh, he's on the uptick. He's he's getting part of his uh, appetite back, which is was is a big thing for to get his strength back where it needs to be to fight. But uh, strong, uh, strong man, very gentle. But uh, I mean, across the board, I think any, anybody that we've ever come in contact with would would all say the same thing. One of the nicest human beings we've all ever met, right? Without a doubt, without a doubt. So glad to hear he's turned the corner and hopefully continues to get better. Yeah. Yep, big art house. So I don't know if Art's watching this, but uh, glad you're doing better, buddy. He could no, be our Art, special Art's guest. We don't know. Yeah, is he our guest? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, Art needs to rest, but that's yeah. such He's going to come on with an such IV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's great to hear about Art. Hey, while we have a second and we're talking about some, some greats in the organization, can can we all just take a second and, and think and talk about the great Bob Watson and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, remembering him. And if anyone has memories, you know, I, I, we just saw him, it feels like it was just yesterday, but I know he's at the ballpark uh, getting recognized. And I, that, that memory will stay with me just because I know that was a special day for a lot of people. So um, yeah, do y'all have any thoughts on, on the life and legacy of Bob Watson? You know, I'll tell you, I was pretty excited when I got the Astros job, uh, and when I, when I got a chance to meet Bob Watson, because I always felt like he was, he's had one of the more underrated baseball careers and not just as a player. Uh, I mean, he, you know, had a fantastic career. I mean, you look at his numbers, he'd be, I think, better appreciated as a player now than he was when he played, uh, you know, first guy to hit for a cycle in both leagues and, you know, uh, was on some, some really good ball clubs with the Astros and with the Yankees too. And then of course, uh, was the first African-American general manager to win a World Series. And I believe he was only the second African-American general manager, period, uh, when he was the GM of that Yankees team that won the World Series in 96. And, of course, was an Astros GM and then worked in Major League Baseball's offices for a long time. Uh, but just a, a really underrated and, and very remarkable career. And, I mean, any I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody here has met him. I mean, just a really good guy and someone with just, 
just tons of stories and tons of knowledge. That's the thing. He hired Joe Torre in, in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember reading the story about uh, him telling Roy Oswalt when he was in double A that, <clears> hey, uh, you're going to be a big part. Uh, this is in 2000 uh, of us winning the gold in the Olympics. And he spotted Roy, you know, real early. He knew he was going to be a, uh, one of the linchpins for that team. So uh, just a, an astute baseball man. And, and we, we had him on for Astroline, uh, our off-season show one time. I just remember just the joy. Now, you know, sometimes we, we get guests on there who, you know, uh, meet with the fans. And it almost seems like it's, I, I wouldn't say bothersome, but just that, uh, Bob Watson and, and Dusty Baker, there's certain guys that I've noticed that just go out of their way to make people feel good about themselves. And, and that encounter, he understands, means a lot to the people. So I was really impressed with Bob Watson. There's so many great things he did for BAT, the baseball assistance team, which helps out so many people in the game, former players, former executives, uh, people that are, have been in the game that need assistance beyond their careers. And he got that Lifetime Achievement Award just three years ago. And Commissioner Rob Manfred was there and Joe Torrey was there. So that was really cool because uh, – and great that he, he knew he got into the Astros Hall of Fame uh, this past offseason as well. So that'll be a special moment whenever that happens. But, yeah, what a, what a great man. And like Robert said, one of the more underrated figures in the history of the game for sure. I'm always going to remember him for just let them play. Yeah. <laughs> Bad news bears, yes. man. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, as, as good as that career was, he nailed that part of it. And uh, that, that's what I vividly remember about him. But I also remember, I think it was around 2003, and uh, I got a letter from Bob Watson when he was on the, uh, the uniform police. The discipline and, committee. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll call it the rules committee. Sure. Yeah, the uniform police. And uh, I, I, I actually had to pay a, a fine to uh, bat via a uh, uniform fine. I think I had, he, he thought I had my pants so like uh, laced through my shoes for some reason, which I didn't because my pants were long enough to hang over my shoes, but he wasn't too happy about that. But that's, that's the only interaction I've had with Bob Watson is sending him a check. <laughs> But you and Tuve shared his number. Yeah, yep, that is true. That's, that's a very right. good point. That's right. That's good stuff. Well, cheers to the life of right. Bob Watson. What a, Absolutely. what a great man. And of course, so great to the Astros organization. He was so nice. The first time I ever interviewed him, I had to talk to him about the Tootsie Rolls. And he was so sweet to me that first time. Thank goodness I had more interactions after that. So that was <laughs> our only conversation. But, but so, so so nice and uh, of course did so many wonderful things so okay mystery guest time is everybody ready mm, let's guess Marvel. everybody get everybody give a guess real quick yeah everybody give a guess all right orbit. i'm gonna say orbit that's what i was going with <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say chuck woolery chuck woolery really? that is not chuck woolery that's not chuck woolery no. hey hey Josh. Hey. what's up everybody what's up red hey. Hey, hey, where'd you get the haircut? Letting it grow back out. Are you? Yeah, it was my dad look for the off season, but I'm letting it grow back out. So did you put the kids to bed already? We we put them to bed about 45 minutes ago. Nice. Is it getting earlier and, and earlier? No, it's actually getting later and later. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that dad life. Yeah. The mornings, the morning, the mornings are earlier and earlier. Oh. Does one How wake up ahead process? of the other one? Yeah. Say again. Does one wake up earlier than the other? Are they in the same room? They're usually in the same schedule, but no, they're they're in the same room and they usually wake up around the same time, anywhere between like seven thirty and eight o'clock. On that note, congrats, Julia. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. No, thanks for joining us and uh, and hanging with us. We're we're missing you guys and we're missing working. So we have to get together and, and have some of our own happy hours. But tell us what you've been up to. Other than babies, are you guys just you hanging out at the house and getting your workouts in? That's it. Yeah, it's uh, we, you know, for me, I know I'm ready to get back. As much as I really am, the only positive I think I have out of all this is being able to spend time with these boys while they're uh, still a very young age and get to hang out with them a lot more. But yeah, we uh, we actually live up here in Crosby, Texas now. We moved out of Houston this off season after the World Series, so we're up here. We got. 50 acres of land, so we got plenty of property to uh, hide away from people. And uh, I think that we might leave here twice a week 
and that's just to go get groceries from Walmart. And yes, we do do the pickup option. We don't go inside. So, um, but yeah, we just stick to our routine. We wake up and then the boys are in ISR. So they're in swimming lessons right now, um, learning how to float and survive wow. in case they fall in a pool, which is, you know, crucial for anybody. Julia mm -hmm. highly suggests that. Um, and then they get their bottle and they go to nap and then we wait on them to wake up and we do it all over again. We're going about three walks a day. We got a pond in the back where I got a lot of fish in the pond. So we go back there and feed them, put them in their stroller and they really enjoy that. They're very rarely fussy on those and they, they enjoy our walks. So, uh, yeah, we, we just hang around the house and, and, and being parents right now. Red, I got to ask you, we had you on an Astros pod uh, radio show about a month ago or so. You said at that point Springer had been over and he actually pulled a fish out of your pond, but you hadn't yet. <laughs> have, you now, have you now changed the dynamic? And you said you were going to stock it a little bit too. I, I have, yes. He, uh, he pulled out a bass in the first cast and I probably, I'm not even exaggerating here. I, I probably about two or three weeks ago, I pulled out, a little perch, probably no joke about that big. <laughs> and I side hooked him. So I didn't really catch him. I just got lucky on the reel. <laughs> I have caught one. So I'm on the board right now. I'm on the board. Did you send a picture to Stringer? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I said, look, I caught some bait from my bigger fish. <laughs> but I, but I, did, I, did, I did let him go. But yeah, we, we, we've stocked a little bit. I've got a, uh, I have a neighbor out here who's actually been very helpful for me and, my, me and Georgette to uh, do a lot of stuff. He's got He's a big owner of a sod farm out here, and he um, he's brought over probably 25 to 30 bass out of his pond that he just goes out and catches and brings them over and throws them in there. So we've got probably 25 more three to five pound bass in there. And wow. We've been, we've been constantly feeding them, and I've, I've actually ordered uh, some shiners off and brought them in some minnows to have a kind of a little bit of vary their appetite up. You can order anything on Amazon nowadays, but I tell you what, our, our front, our front, our front porch looks like it's Christmas every day because we don't go anywhere. We order everything off Amazon. How are your dog, how are your dogs with the kids? Really great. We actually, um, I think it was gosh, two weeks ago, we actually had to put one of our, we had to put our great Dane down. He, uh, he, he had been battling cancer for about two years and, he um, he outlived his expectancy over 18 months, so got a lot of extra time with him. So we were grateful for that, but a very sad time because that was Jet's baby. And um, but they all do really well. He was he was probably our better one of the five that we had. He was very cuddly with him, let him touch him and pet him and lay on him and all that stuff. But our Frenchies are a little too obsessive with him to lick him on the face, and we got to prevent him from doing that. And our in old English Bulldog Murray, he could care less. He's always been the kind of loner dog who hangs out in the dog room. And uh, Our American Bully, he's 10 and a half, so he spends a lot of his time just laying around and being lazy. But he's really good with him, too. He'll let him pet him. Uh, but they do really well. And, and our little black French ace, he's, he's very protective. So if he gets in a mood and doesn't like where somebody or another dog comes near him, he'll kind of attack him a little bit. But he's done a lot better, and, and they really are understanding the concept of, of those boys are part of the family now. So, how, okay, so how old are your twins now? They'll be eight months on the second. All right, so what's the, because I mean, at that age, it seems like something new is happening every week. What's the, what's the, the newest thing in, in, in their development? Sitting up. They're right. sitting up on their, their rider is sitting up on his own pretty much all the time. Um, Maverick does it pretty well sometimes. We actually take them out on a little splash pad. We hook it up to the water hose outside to get them out, outside a little bit. And, they both do really well on that Maverick or Maverick set for probably about five minutes and, and, and Ryder set for 10 minutes straight without falling. So doing really well with that. And Ryder is any day now crawling. He's uh, he's wobbling right now to get forward, but he, he's got the hand and leg motions down. So any, any day we get him on his belly and got him looking at something he wants to go get, we're making sure we keep an eye on him so we don't miss it. Yeah, that's kind of the fringe benefit of you being home is you get to be home for some of these milestones that these uh, kids are having. It's awesome. Right. Now, secretly, are you kind of taking the boys off the side and teaching them, you know, uh, Georgia Bulldog cheers or mm. teaching them how to say Bulldog first? We're working on that. We'll, we'll get to that. They've got plenty of Georgia outfits ready to go. <laughs> um, we got Georgia shoes. They got some hats. So we're definitely going to teach them to uh, love those dogs. We're, we may live in Texas now, but we're not going to be anything – we're not going to gig anything. We're not going to longhorn anything. <laughs> we're not going to be the, the twelfth man stuff or whatever it's called. So we're, we're a bulldog a boy. family through and through. <laughs> All right, what's um, going on with your teammates? You, you talking to those guys a lot? 
Uh, I use, I keep in touch with Springer quite a bit. Um, I caught talking to Straw a good, good amount. Um, and Mike, Uncle Mike, you know, Mike's Mike. He's very unresponsive on the cell phone a whole lot of, a lot of the times. But no, George, George and I have, have stayed in good contact and we've actually hung out a lot, played golf a little bit. The, uh, we took our boat out on the lake about a week and a half ago and him and Shar came out with us and hung out. And he's, like I said, he's been over here and we're having um, a few friends over for Memorial Day weekend and him and him and Shar oh, nice. are coming over as well as uh, Tyler White and Allie. Uh, they're coming over to hang out. So I know Allie and Jed are really, really good friends. So they're coming over to hang out. And um, but yeah, those, those three are probably the big ones. Miles, I know, has uh, asked a good amount of questions about his little girl and, and what kind of yeah. things that he needs right. advice on. And I, I try to help him out as much as possible because he seems pretty clueless to be a parent at such a young age, <laughs> but uh, they're doing really well. But, you know, Springer and I stay in good contact regardless and I always give him a hard time because, you know, when Mike got here, he, he, he kind of navigated his way away from me for the, from the first two years here to, to, to uncle Mike. So now I just give him a hard time saying, yeah, it's kind of hard when you don't have Mike around. you got to hang out with me now. I'm sorry you got to <laughs> do those kind of things. Josh, what are you missing most? I mean, you were talking about the guys, obviously, but what are you missing most right now about the season and just baseball games? Oh, man. How can you pick one? I mean, you miss your teammates. You miss the game. You miss the fans. You miss – the woos around the town and the city of Houston for me personally around everywhere we go. Um, <clears throat> overall, I mean, I miss the game overall. I mean, I, I'll take, like, I, I think it was, was you, Julia, that posted about a late night game against the Yankees to travel to Minnesota for a day game, right? I'll, I will take that right now, <laughs> any day over not playing right now. I, I, I miss it so much. And, um, you know, what a lot of people may not understand about this game and all this, this negativity going around about, you know, players wanting to get their salaries and owners wanting to get their money and yada, yada, yada. You know, it's, it's kind of a big step for me because here I am a 33-year-old and, and I'll be a free agent this offseason. If we don't play, it's going to be a lot harder for me to find a contract. So that side of me really wants to play as well because I want to continue to be playing until I'm, you know, 40 years old as long as my body allows it. And teams want to look at, you know, a, a quirky left-handed hitting outfielder who runs his mouth and doesn't care what people think. So I, I want to get back out there and, and play as much as possible. Yeah, we heard, so they played this, we're playing games on AT&T right now from last year and tonight's game, as I was starting to tweet about it, the train was so loud that you, and Baggy's on, in the booth with Blum and TK and you can't hear a word the announcers are saying and it was so loud and I'm like, I missed the train, <laughs> you know, just all the little things that, <laughs> that I'm we miss coming everything. across and I, I would give anything to be in the ballpark hearing it all and I, I'm, I know that's got to be hard on you guys. It is. It's very hard, you know. And, and even with this year, I'll, I'll, I would, I would gladly accept any booing right now just to get back out there and play baseball. <laughs> I will take that right now, any day. Gosh, isn't it funny? I mean, I mean, remember when you came over from Oakland and how entrenched you were there, and how popular you were with the A's, but how seamless it went for you to come with this Astros, and how. I, I think you're identified more with this team than any other team because you guys have been so great for, for your tenure here. Uh, but uh, this, this little stay here so far in Houston, I mean, you'll look back on this with, and you won't even hardly be able to explain it, will you? No, not at all. You know, I mean, obviously had some, some great years in Oakland and I'm very fortunate for my time there because it made me the player of who I am today. Um, I fully believe if I don't get traded from Boston to Oakland, I may not be where I'm at. So yeah. definitely a, a stepping stone in my career and then had some great years. Obviously, 2012 was a big year winning on the last day of the season, winning that division in 13, having a really good team. And then kind of, you know, going about the Oakland way where they get rid of all your good players and, yeah. and kind of rebuild. So that was kind of tough. But, yeah, coming here and, you know, three 100-win seasons, winning a World Series the first year. And just having some some really good players and then a really good teams come out here and win and you know should have won it all last year didn't get that opportunity but there's so many moments here where um, I think I was welcome pretty easily because I, I was excuse me I had such a a huge fan base personally as well as a good team over there in Oakland but I was I was a really big fan favorite there 
a lot of supporters there did really good and then and came over here and I you know always I will never forget the third home game of the year where we had that extra inning ball game against Seattle and Georgia at the walk off and all of a sudden you hear woos around the whole stadium and, and that was the the, the way the woo started for me. So I think for the rest of my life and my career, I've always been remembered as, <clears throat> as the, the, the mayor of Wooston, That's cool. so to speak. <laughs> so it's uh, it's something that I think I'll, I'll look back and cherish for my entire life. And and uh, I think if people look back and ask me what my favorite years in, in baseball were, I think definitely seven teams up there because obviously of what we accomplished and um, what we won. And, and then especially after the, the hurricane, you know, just having everything be scripted so perfect for that team to, to go on and win it all, I think it was – one of the most special years of my career. Josh, Josh what sort of what things have – oh, go ahead, Blomer. Uh, I just want to know, what are you doing to stay in shape? So you talked about your seeing Springer and some of these guys. Are you guys working out together? Or are you going <clears> to the stadium? Or you got a facility at your house? What do you got? I, I'm actually fortunate enough. I have a little gym in my house here. Um, not nice. just – so I have, a, I have a, a few dumbbells. I have a the, uh, one of those – I don't know what it's what the brand's called, but it's like a rowing machine with the water resistance in it, and I can mm -hmm. turn the water up higher and do that. And I have a treadmill and an elliptical machine. I have um, cable machine, um, but yeah, my my workouts are kind of minimal. I'm one of those guys that when the downtime is here, I kind of tend to go towards the resting moment, especially as I as I get older. But um, we did just start working out of the stadium last week. They started letting a few of us come in. Uh, so Jeremiah contacted me and then wants me to come in, obviously, and, and make okay. sure that one, the shoulder is still doing well uh, from the surgery this off season. So and, and, and getting in there and getting some workouts and, and getting my legs back under me. So, yeah, I'm going in actually tomorrow, and I think they're doing two days a week. And you know, it, it's already pretty crazy that the testing they're having to do. We pull into the garage, checking our temperature out there. So you, then you walk down to the clubhouse and. Oka's sitting out there and he's checking your temperature and you fill out a questionnaire and you go do your thing and all of our staff are in masks, our strength coaches and our trainers are in masks. And, you know, Oka's asking all... the questions? Oka? Oka's taking temperatures. <laughs> he's not he's really asking, asking what your name is. He, he, he's aiming the temperature <laughs> and he's going, symptoms? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. we, we, we love Oka down there. And, and, and then as soon as you get ready to leave, they take your temperature again and you do an exit questionnaire and, and then you take it to the house. So it's uh, all these, these different proposals we're seeing and, and, and you know, stuff that's going to have to happen for us to be able to play. It's going to be annoying at times, but uh, like I said, I'll, I'll take it over what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, we were talking it. about that before you came on. We were talking about all those guidelines, the 87 pages worth with the no sunflower seeds, no hitting underneath, no showers. My biggest thing is no hot tub. Yeah. I live and pray, but I die by the hot tub. The no showers thing I can't understand because that's how you get a staph infection. That's having it. someone ha having a staph infection, I know that, you know, I've had one before. It's no fun. Um, I don't understand how they're going to control no spitting. We're baseball players. It's what we do, whether you dip or not. Sunflower seeds and bubble gum out of the game of baseball, I, just, I don't see it happen. The, the, the social distancing in the dugout. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I, I understand some of it. There's a lot of things that I don't see working out the way that they want it to. Seems like it was a big think tank that everybody's just trying to write down every single thing that could be misconstrued. So they want you guys to at least – be mindful of some of those things and maybe curtail some of those things, don't you think? Absolutely. I, I think with, with the right mindset, you know, I think a lot of things will be minimized. I don't think you can completely yeah. diminish everything right away. I, I think, uh, you know, the sunflower seeds, you, you're going to have to have something done there. And like I said, the spitting, you just, you just got to make sure you can't be from, I can't be, you know, talking to Springer and, and Mike in center field during a pitching change and spit at their feet. You know, stuff like that, I understand. But if I'm in, out there in right field by myself and I got a big old loogie working from allergies, and pollen, <laughs> I'm going to need to be able to hop that thing about 10 feet to my left and get it out of there. No, there, there, you just have a special spit bottle. You just keep spitting in the bottle. Be, that, make, then you yeah. recycle it up. Make sure you seal it up, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, obviously it looks like it's going to start off with no fans, right? So – Every, I mean, if you've you spent time in the minor leagues, I'm sure you've had some games at some point that were not well attended. What's the what's the game? Is there any particular game that stands out to you where there were like the fewest fans or, or close to zero fans that you've played in? Yeah. I played in Oakland. 
As Blummer points in his ex jersey. You could have played in that uniform. <laughs> had your uh, debut in front of 3,000. <laughs> yeah, so any, any – and, and, you know, that's not – I don't mean to bash them because they're great fans. But, you know, anything aside from a giveaway opening night or, uh, you know, like a Yankees coming to town, there, there's not many more than two to 3,000 on that. I mean, you go Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of a four-game set during the week, night games, and you look out there and you have the right field crazy crew, the left field crazy crew, the diamond level stilled up, and then basically the players' wives and fans and family section <laughs> with a few scattered here and there. So it is kind of a, a letdown to play like that. But, you know, the ones that are there are very diehard. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you look back like um, – actually, I think – are we still affiliated with the Lancaster Jethawks? Not yeah. anymore. Not anymore. So, I, you know, the Red Sox were there for two years, so I spent three and a half months there. So um, – I think there was maybe an average of 20, play, 20 fans there a night. Um, and actually, one of them was my now wife when we were dating. That's where actually where I met Georgette was in Lancaster. Wow. Of all places, that's where we met. So it's, uh, she was one of the 20 there every night. It was easy to pick her out. <laughs> it was. She was right behind the dugout every night, keeping an eye on me. <laughs> it was a good place to hit left-handed, man. Oh, you ain't kidding. Ooh, what is that, a Jeff social club right? selfie? I'll never forget. I had 355 at 17 and 59 in three months. Whoa. Wow. All right. So what's the best stadium in the big leagues for you now? What, what fits your stroke? Oh, performance wise, it's got to be Baltimore, Toronto. Uh-huh. I've always been a really good hitter at Baltimore. I think it has to be something where I, it's where I debuted. Uh, and I've got mm-hmm. every first offensive thing you could give there. So I got every, I got my first single, double, triple home run, strikeout, walk, wow. RBI, all that at that ballpark within the first, gosh, within the first two months, I think. So I played three games there in my debut, and I had a single double strikeout walk and a home run in two days. Um, and I know at one point, I think in 2016 or 17, I was the all-time leading slugging percentage hitter there. Wow. That's right. For a little while. And, um, and in Toronto, Toronto, I, if you're in a Blue Jays uniform, I'm usually going deep. I don't know what it is. I, I, just usually like, I, I like hitting those guys. I like hitting there. It's where I had my three-homer game, followed by a two-homer game that tied a major right. record. Um, so, I, it's just, I don't know. I just, I go up, I go up north and I, I, I just do really well up there. I guess it's maybe not being on my phone as much. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I really like playing up there. Well, that's good stuff. All right, Josh, thank you for joining us. We'll let you go. I know you <laughs> You probably had a long day with those twins. You're probably exhausted, but thank you, thank you for joining us. This was a lot of fun. No, yeah. yeah, no problem. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Hope to see Thanks. you soon, Thanks buddy. So much. Thanks yeah. for coming on, Oh, Red. my gosh, yes. See you all. All right. That was our mystery guest, y'all. So great catching up with him. That, that makes me miss baseball more. You know, yeah. he's such a, he's such an easy conversation. I, I yeah, always enjoy being around He's a good sport him. to be doing that with us. Yep. <laughs> I miss your walk-offs, Julia. Like that's what we. I do too. We, man. So how's that gonna I mean, how's that gonna work? <laughs> no, I no, no, I don't know. It's not. But it's well, you know, it's conversations like that where you know that's that's what I'm gonna miss. If even if we're all social yeah. distancing or if the reporters aren't are hanging around too close. I mean, it's those conversations because that's how Josh Reddick is. And the, you know, when you when you mm-hmm. see him every day at the ballpark, whether he's getting ready to hit BP or he's just sit, hanging out at his locker trying to beat somebody on whatever game they're playing. I mean, he is that guy and, and that's who you enjoy going up to talk to. So I'm going to miss those interactions for as long as we all need to be separated. Um, but I, I bet it, I bet that takes a long time. You know what, seeing him as a dad, yeah, I can't help but think about what happened to his dad, Kenny, when he was just about his boy's age. Josh was shy of one year old when his dad got electrocuted and lost a, a leg and, and half of an arm and a, a bunch of fingers in his other hand. And it, the one of the funniest things I thought about that, which is it's not funny, but Josh will laugh about it, was that Josh started using his feet all the time. He'd even feed himself because he saw his dad using his feet so much. And his parents thought, you know what? He's three years old. He needs to start using his hands more. But he saw his dad using his feet so much uh, that uh, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to emulate his dad. And his dad thinks that that's part of why he has such good balance 
as a hitter because he used his feet so much as a kid. Wow. Hmm. Like, like things that make you go, hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> can crazy. you imagine, can you imagine not knowing your dad any differently than that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, other people's reactions were probably more startling than anything for Josh when he was a kid. Right. Right. And no matter, I mean, every, I think, you know, your dad, your dad is usually your hero, right? So mm -hmm. whatever, whatever your dad's doing, you want to do the same thing or, or be just like him. And uh, so, yeah, I can totally understand that. He's definitely, he's a great dad. I mean, that his social media account is a lot of fun to follow because they are constantly doing something with those boys. And they, I mean, they were ready for them. The second they knew they were having babies, they had that room decked out with Spider-Man yeah. and Superman and they had, every, you know, they were so excited to, to bring those little ones in the world. Hey, did you guys notice? Josh, I feel like it's reliving his childhood. Yeah. Did you guys notice in spring training, he was talking about Miles Straw, how Miles was starting to get a little bit more comfortable and more, um, more of a presence in the clubhouse with the, with the other outfielders. Did you notice that? I did notice For that. Sure. And yeah. I mean, you know, this is the best opportunity that he's had, you know, in his pretty big league career with Jake Marisnik getting traded to the Mets. I mean, it's pretty obvious that, you know, he's, he's the guy who's expected to be to fill that role that Marisnik filled so well in his time with the Astros, kind of that fourth outfielder pinch runner. Um, and uh, yeah. And, and I think it's a group, particularly with the outfielders where the, I mean, that's such a, they're such a close knit group, but it seems like, you know, Reddick comes in and it seemed like, he had been there forever. Brantley comes in and he fits right in. And I think that's a testament to kind of that group that the way that, that guys kind of feel like they're included in a part of it, even after a, after a short time. I think Miles was always one of the most popular guys anyhow, even last year, yeah. right? He's yeah. funny. He yeah. fits in with every part of that clubhouse. He does. And I, when we talked to him at FanFest. I thought it was funny because I mentioned to him about his, his – speed rating and where he ranks and he knew like who the top guys were ahead of him Trey Turner one of them uh Byron Buxton and what he's like if I hit a ground ball like if I want to go 90 percent I think this could hurt my speed rating so he goes 100 percent every time just so he gets a good rating I he's mean, thinking he, about stat cats while he's running down the first right, base exactly like the last time we saw Miles playing, he was he hit that inside the park home run, right? In spring training. It was like, well, oh, final right. one game. we did before he got closed out. What's that? Didn't he tell you afterwards he had never done that in any, like, little league or anything? Yeah. In two home yeah. runs in one game? He also, yeah, two home runs in one game. He also hated inside the park home runs because he hated running that much. <laughs> Do you know when he hit the first one, he looked into our dugout because he told Bregman that he was going to go yard. He told that's Alex good. he was going to take him deep, or he was going to go deep, and he did. That's, that's a Miles Bregman Straw. move. Miles Straw calling his shot. Yeah. <laughs> Blubber, what do, you, what do you think about Josh talking about wanting to play till he's 40? Because you and I have played with people who have said that in the past. And is it, is it surprising to me about Josh saying that? It's not. But what's your take on it? Good luck. He, he, I mean, yeah. I know he, he has a tendency to lean towards the rest part of working out but uh you know as well as I do playing as long as we did and I got to 39 and a half I had uh, envisioned playing until I was 40 but I fell just short because my body completely gave out and I finally got the hint but uh you've got to stay in pretty good shape and he I don't think he's really one of those guys that's you know overly muscular uh, you know, he's, he's kind of got that wiry frame, but the thing that worries me about Josh is he plays so dang hard out in the outfield, yeah. running into walls and things like that. That's the only thing that worries me a little bit. Sometimes that can pile up a little bit and, and, uh, add up by the time you get to that 38, 39 year old, uh, uh, age, but uh, this is also a different era as far as analytics, and analytics don't have a tendency to encourage guys to pay play past 35, 36 years old unless you're a superstar. I think the fact that he's so good in the clubhouse, you talk about how loud he is, how funny he is, how gritty he is. And Todd, what was he telling us? I mean, he's willing to go to AAA, right? He told us that on a, on a podcast. He just wants Damn. to keep playing. And, and obviously, and he mentioned it just a little while ago, this is his free agent year. So he wants to put up numbers. He, he doesn't want to have a, a right. half a 
season or whatever they're going to end up with. Yeah, but he, he wants to play. He's going to play somewhere next year. Um, hopefully it's with the Astros because he's a great guy. Well, think about the free agent outfield class coming up. My God, he needs to go out there and get some at-bats and prove himself. I don't blame him in that department because, uh, you know, Mookie Betts is going to be a free agent and then George Springer. Springer's going to be a, a, a free agent too. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be a heavy class. So he wants to go out and play and prove himself. Everybody, Michael all outfielders Brantley. and, and Yuli. Well, Yuli's oh, not man, out there, but yeah, it. I know. I know. It's going to be weird. I, I mean, the timing was perfect for Garrett Cole. I don't know if we're going to see a contract like that for a little while, depending on how the economics play out after all this. But, wow, it's going to be, it's going to be an un- unbelievable offseason to see what happens. Well, hopefully we have a, a half season or more to talk about an offseason. Yeah, I can and Hopefully the offseason is just a few months as opposed to over a year. True. Yes, to that. Um, Josh Do Reddick you- is the best for joining us on this happy hour. You guys are the best for doing this happy hour. We didn't have a chance to ask him what he was drinking. What do you think he was drinking? Club seltzer. Oh, he's a seltzer guy. Say LaCroix. (laughs) (laughs) Who does he play for now? (laughs) 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 Oh, what is Josh Drake? What is Josh Drake? It's got to be Anheuser Busch, doesn't it? He's American yeah, as they come. Or, what did what did TK say? A social club seltzer. That's what he's drinking. That's what, yeah, social that's club seltzer. Yeah, TK's yeah. going bud heavy. <laughs> being uh, being down here in um, Tampa, like I drove by where the old Bush Gardens were. <laughs> Used to be able to go to Bush Gardens and go to the hospitality room because we are sponsored by Anheuser Bush. So I thought about this. You could go in that thing and get free beer after free beer <laughs> after free beer. No kidding. And it was like, oh my gosh. It was unbelievable. I mean, half the parents would be like, yeah, go on another roller coaster ride. We'll be here. <laughs> that, ex- that actually explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was awesome. Uh, it was like you could go on the tour of the brewery and everything. It was, it was big time. Anyway. But, yeah, see, some tiger, see some tigers in there? <laughs> in the Maybe become king one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, will look. you guys enjoy the rest of your beverages, you your, your adult beverages? I need a right. refill. Joe Boo needs a refill. <laughs> what are you missing the most? A, a good wine? A good red wine, yes. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't I didn't miss it until here recently. I got through the first six weeks of quarantine without missing it until the last couple of weeks. Whew. So you're one of the few who's taken the drinking down during the quarantine. <laughs> I can't say that I'm not going to gain quarantine 15, but yeah, not going to be because of alcohol. Um, All right, guys. Is that a thing? Are people gaining weight during the quarantine? Yes, it's a thing. That's why I'm out there with my cases of beer as weight. (laughs) You've got got an excuse. I know. know. (laughs) But it's hard. Sparky doesn't. A lot of people are just sitting around. They're just sitting all day. We're not as active. We don't have gyms. Yeah. So it's, it's a thing. Who's gym? It's a thing. Okay, I'm wrapping this up. All right, good job. All right. Good seeing everybody. See you Stay guys. safe. Have a great Wash week. your hands. All right. Yes. Good wave. Watch your body. Said. Just good your wave. hands. Wave like that again, Blummer. <laughs> <laughs>